Today, we're gonna talk about multi-jointed swim baits. Right now is a perfect time to pick up a hard body, multi-jointed swim bait and just go chucking and winding on points, on clay banks, doesn't matter. This lure right here, these lures I should say, represent a herring better than any other bait on the market. And that's why they are so special, specifically for this time of year. In today's video, I'm gonna go through tips and tricks, what I throw it on, line, rod, reel, setup. We're gonna go through where, you know, where I'm looking for, why I'm throwing these baits. I'm gonna walk you through my entire collection of multi-jointed swim baits. I'm gonna give you the best value swim baits and just the best period, regardless of price. There's so many out there. But before you head out on the water with your multi-jointed swim bait, hopefully you learned something new from today's video that you can apply and go do something different. Whether you're you know, a complete beginner to multi-jointed swim baits, then obviously you can learn a ton, or hopefully you can at least learn one thing to take away and be better at multi-jointed swim bait fishing. So let's jump right into it. To start off really quickly, what is a multi-jointed swim bait? A swim bait is a term, a generic term that is thrown around so much nowadays. I mean, it's ridiculous. Everything's a swim bait. You can have soft body swim baits. You can have glide baits that they call swim baits. You can have a multi-jointed hard body. You can have jointed soft body swim baits. I mean, the category is just endless nowadays. And so that term just gets thrown out a bunch. And honestly, it's just a, you know, almost like a buzz term nowadays. It's changed so much in the last I'll say five to 10 years in what a swim bait actually is. But a multi-jointed swim bait, it's exactly like the name implies, is a hard body swim bait and it has more than one joint. And what's different about that is because if you guys know or have seen some of my other videos, glide baits have a single joint and they cut back and forth in a larger S pattern. Where a multi-jointed swim bait the more joints you have in a swim bait, the tighter the action is going to be. So if you go again from one joint, it's gonna be really wide and that's why it's a glide bait. And then the more joints you add, this one has two here. I've seen three, four, five. I mean, there's some crazy ones out there that you can jump into, but the more joints it has, the more or the tighter the action is going to be. So in the water, this bait is gonna swim very, very narrow. And that is so important because here in the Southeast on our herring lakes, that is exactly what a blueback herring swims like. So it's extremely natural. So that's all a multi-jointed swim bait is. Again, it's normally a herring pattern. It really, that's the main forage that these baits are trying to, to mimic. So now that we all have that understanding, let's jump into where I'm gonna fish these baits. Again, this bait is meant to mimic a herring. And if you guys know, if you, if you have fished in the Southeast or you live in the Southeast, these blueback herring love to move. So the answer to where to fish this bait is pretty much anywhere. These baits are designed to be reeled very fast and most, I would say moderate fast all the way to extra fast is kind of the retrieve rate of these lures. So it's a very active power fishing pattern. With that said, when to fish them? Normally it starts right around now, I would say late springtime all the way through the fall when those bass are aggressively chasing bigger size bait fish. That's when you wanna throw this. But what I'm looking for when I throw this bait is I wanna see bass that are up in the water column, if you have forward facing, or actively busting and feeding on the surface, you know, feeding on herring. If you see herring jumping out of the water, normally bass are chasing them, or the bass are just gonna come up and blow up as well. But right now it's about herring spawn. You know, those herring are up on the points, and that's why this is the perfect time to pick up a multi-jointed swim bait and go fishing. So again, just to recap what I'm looking for, anywhere there's bait and anywhere that there's herring, again, are stacked up in certain areas or those fish are blowing up. So it's pretty obvious. It's no secret there. I mean, it really is pretty simple on where you're going to throw this. You can throw this again over points, over clay banks. It's better with wind. You can throw it over brush piles, especially on lakes like Hartwell or Lanier. These fish, you know, herring right over brush piles is a great, great way to catch a bunch of different fish. But that's really all I'm looking for to throw these baits is basically just time of year. That's what it boils down to when the bass start aggressively feeding. 
Now let's jump into some of the modifications that I make with multi-jointed swim baits. There's really two. The first is hooks. I always change my hooks in split rings, guys. Not so much for bass, but for, I would say, striper or any other bycatch. If you use other split rings or you use like the stock split rings and the hooks, they normally bend out. Now a lot of hooks as well, if you're on a very, you know, if you're around smallmouth or spotted bass, they're very aggressive fish and they have very solid head shakes. And so those fish will also bend out hooks. So what I do is I like to upgrade my hooks to Gamagatsu hooks. This is, uh, again, hooks is, treble hooks especially are one of those things that are, you know, very controversial. You know, people can get very opinionated with the hooks they use. And honestly, you have to figure out what works for you and your style. You know, sometimes you have you know, hooks that point in, you have round bend, you've got, um, you know, just a number of different options in hooks. So post down in the comments below what brand and type of treble hook you, you, you use with your multi-jointed swim baits. So that's number one thing that I change. And then number two, and this is kind of an interesting one because not all brands come with it out of the package, but go ahead and add a split ring or some kind of snap at the beginning of the bait. Some companies have them, not all do. Here's Spro, looks like Spro includes it on theirs. But a lot of companies do not, and what this does is this actually allows the head of the bait to get a little bit of back and forth action instead of being directly tied to with the line. It just gives that bait, it allows it to start quicker and then also allows that bait to rock a little bit more. And if you guys have been around you know, and watched a bunch of YouTube videos on swim baits, you know that a lot of talk has been about how the head of the bait, the head of the swim bait, rocks back and forth is often a great determiner of how good that swim bait is. It's just something about that. I don't know if it's natural. I don't know if it just drives those fish crazy, but adding that snap at the front can help increase a little bit of head movement and just make your swim baits that much better. So those are kind of my two tips and tricks their modifications with swim baits. So we've talked about what they are, when to throw them, where to throw them, some of my modifications. Let's jump into my setup for swim baits now. So this is probably my favorite swim bait rod. And you, if you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you guys know everything seems to be G Loomis. I mean, I love their product. I'm not sponsored or anything, but golly, I should be. I've spent enough money on them. Goodness gracious. I, so if, there, if uh, anyone from G Loomis is watching, go ahead. I'd love a sponsorship. It'd help me out and save me some money. But hands down, this is the 883 bladed jig rod. And honestly, it's a phenomenal swim bait rod. I would say for you know your five to six inch swim baits, you guys can see here, I've got a Sabeel tied on. It's a perfect Sabeel rod. And what you're looking for, for a swim bait rod, it's just like, pick your favorite brand out there on the market. But what you want is you want a rod that loads pretty deep into the blank. So, you know, somewhere like right in here, you want that rod to load up all the way down to there because you're using treble hooks. And once you hook those fish, when they're throwing their head and jumping around and everything like that, you want that rod to eat up a lot of that that shock and that what that fish is doing and it just gives you some forgiveness. So you want a softer rod. Again, for me, my personal favorite for most of these swim baits that you're about to see, anywhere from you know five to six inches is that 883 bladed jig rod by uh, G Loomis. But hands down, my favorite there, it throws a bunch of different swim baits, guys. You can use it for, you know, you can use it for a chatter bait, you can throw it for a swim bait, you can throw top water on this rod. It's soft enough for that, bigger top waters for sure. With smaller swim baits, I would scale down and maybe one power lighter than this. I think it's the eight, I forget, I forget what it is, guys. But, you know, this is a medium heavy. Go to a medium uh, for your, you know, 110 millimeter size. So, you know, your four to five inch baits, I would say just step down one power. But anything with a nice parabolic action, that's what you're looking for. Now for reel, again, pick your favorite reel. I personally, I don't know if I own a reel less than seven to one to one, if that tells you of how I normally fish. 
I generally like power fishing and I like fishing fast as much as possible because in my opinion, you can always slow down with an eight to one to one. It's tough, but you can absolutely do it where it's very tough to speed up. If let's say you have a six, four to one and you're trying to reel really fast, it's just very, very difficult to do. So I'd prefer to be, you know, over geared and have a faster reel. So especially with this technique, with multi-jointed swim baits, I throw an 8.1 to one. So very, very fast reel, because again, oftentimes you're reeling that bait very, very fast because a herring flies, guys. I mean, I've learned over the years that you literally cannot reel it fast enough. If you put it in front of a fish and it's going to eat that bait or it's you know actively hunting and chasing herring and it locks onto your lure, you will not be able to reel that bait fast enough away from that fish, even with an eight to one to one. I mean, it's wild. These fish are so fast. Obviously herring in the wild are faster than you doing this and that bait's just swimming naturally through the water. Those herring don't do that in the wild. They're flying, so, and those bass still catch them. So super fast reel. Now here's one I would say line-wise, I love fluorocarbon, that's my opinion. I think if you guys have been watching again long enough, you've heard me say this, but it's a perfect balance between forgiveness and sensitivity and a little bit of stretch. So monofilament can work. I mean, golly guys, the guy I fish with, one of my fishing partner, he uh, he fishes monofilament, Berkeley big game with his swim baits. So you absolutely can. I just personally, I think it has too much stretch. That's my opinion. I, if you're at a long cast, if you bomb that swim bait out there, you know, 40, 50 yards and a fish smokes it, when you have that softer rod that loads up and monofilament, golly, you can jump and run to the back of the boat trying to hook set, but because of all that stretch, you really don't get a lot of hook penetration at the end of that cast. Vice versa, if you go with braid, it's obviously there's no stretch at all and you can feel everything. However, in my opinion, a lot of times you can rip those treble hooks out or you can rip it away from those fish with braid. And if you're fishing cleaner water, again, hot take, but they can see braid better. So fluorocarbon for me, I just, again, think it's a perfect balance or in between for fishing line, especially for swim baits. You get that nice shock absorption when that fish smashes that swim bait. And then, you know, I've never really had any issues with it whatsoever. It's pretty clear underwater. I don't know if it super matters with a swim bait because you're reeling it so fast, but again, anything that I can do in my favor to make the fish bite, you know, if I get one more bite throughout the day, it's worth it to me. So fluorocarbon fishing line with your, golly, so with your smaller swim baits, I would say anything from four inches to five inches, you can get away with 10 or 12 pound line, absolutely. With these, this is the Sabeel 125, so I think about a five inch lure, five and a half, uh, six inch lures, some of these bigger ones. You got some, you know, custom local companies here, six inch swim bait. I like to throw 15 pound line. That's my absolute favorite pound uh, to throw. You can go all the way up to 20. I don't know if the line size matters a whole ton. With this, my partner throws 20 pound big game, which is like 30 pound, I mean, it's huge. Gets bit all the time. So he may catch more swim bait fish than I do, I don't know. but. Don't be worried too much about line size. I personally, my personal favorite's 15. It allows me to, I've never really, again, struggled with breaking off fish for the most part, but it allows me to make a super long cast as well because the smaller diameter of the line, the further generally you can cast that bait. So it's that, that perfect balance. But fluorocarbon, 15 pound fluorocarbon for most of your five to six inch herring baits is a perfect option. So that's my setup there. Uh, it works great caught so many swim bait fish on it. Now let's jump into all of my baits that I have. And then at the end of this, I want to give you guys kind of the best value. And then I'm going to give you just my favorite period. So let's open this box up. So these are kind of my tried and true favorites here in this box. I've used so many herring style baits out there. You know, if I don't like them, I'll sell them. I mean, just straight up being honest with you guys, I'm not brand specific or loyal or, or anything like that. So I'm just giving you guys my honest two cents and my opinion. So if it's in the box, I throw it. But let's kind of work our way down. The first ones are Sabeel's. You guys have heard me talk a bunch about the Sabeel. 
it is just absolutely obviously i had one tied on where is it you know right there but the original sabil or the Acast Magic Swimmer is hands down one of the best baits out there. It is a perfect herring imitator. If you watch that thing swim, it looks just like a blueback herring. I mean, that kick, that swim, and then every once in a while it blows out and kicks, looks so natural. Hands down one of the best baits out there. Then we have, you know, kind of the newest one is the Berkeley Magic Swimmer. It's just like the Sabil, guys. I mean, it looks the same. It's the same size. Look at this. I mean, it's the same looking bait and you would think that, you know, it's the same fishing lure. And generally speaking, guys, it's a great bait. I'm not saying it's a bad bait whatsoever. You can go out and catch a bunch of fish on the Berkeley Magic Swimmer. But at the end of the day, when all the chips come down on the table, you know, if you're out in a tournament, I gotta be honest with you guys, that original Sabil just has that it factor. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what they did or what they changed, but it's just different than the Berkeley Magic Swimmer. So, great baits though, absolutely great baits there. Then I'll, I'll keep it up with kind of some still, some larger companies. Here's the uh, Spro Sashimi Shad. This is a smaller version. I've got their, you know, 125, the larger. That's the perfect size. That's the one you want to be throwing right now. The herring, at least around here, is very, very large. I've been catching fish spitting up herring, you know, six to eight inches long, so huge herring. So throw the big boy. But these baits have been actually, honestly, very impressive for a mass-produced bait. I would say, hands down, I mean, you guys can see we talked about joints. This one has one, two, three joints and four different pieces. So it's gonna have a real tight action, swim super well. I've heard a bunch of people around here, especially locals say they get, you know, especially last year, they caught some of their biggest fish ever. I know one person who caught their personal best spotted bass on this lure right here. So hands down, they work. They look just like a herring. If I had to give one complaint about it, it's a little light. It's very tough. I don't want to say tough. You can cast this thing as far as you need to. I'm just picky and used to throwing, you know, big heavy baits. You can cast a mile. So I would like to be able to cast this bait a little bit further. I don't know what weight it actually has on here. I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, it says three quarters of an ounce. It doesn't feel like three quarters of an ounce. If I'm being honest with you guys, I should test that out. It doesn't feel like three quarters. There's no way. There's no way. But anyway, that's a great option as well. Hands down gets bit. All right, so let's jump into some custom ones now. So some of my personal favorites, golly, these are fantastic little baits too. This is Southern Hook Company. It's a local company around here in Atlanta, I believe. But these are the, I believe these are the snack size herrings. I don't know exactly what they're called, but they're the small ones. These things smash in the fall and they'll work right now. But as you guys can see, I mean, that's about a, you know, a four inch little baby herring, I would say. And I mean, they're, they're not the most refined, if I'm being honest. I mean, they're not like perfect, but the profile and the way they swim in the water, they hands down get smashed. So if you guys are interested in those, those are again, the Southern Hook Company, uh, snack size herring or something like that. That's the, the difference. But he also makes, which is one of my hands down favorites across the board. I, if you guys can't tell, I love swim baits. And uh, I know I keep saying these are my favorites, obviously, because I have them. I mean, these are the ones that made it through the test of time. But they all just do such unique things and work at specific times of year. So you got to play around with that. But this is their bite size herring. Oh, an absolute magnum spotted bass catcher. One of my favorite swim baits out there. As you guys can see the size difference, it's huge. I mean, it's probably five and a half, six inches long. Don't worry about it, guys. Like I said, people get intimidated throwing a bait this size. It's not that big. I promise you, I've seen herring that are way bigger than this. I mean, maybe not way bigger, but I've seen herring bigger than this. No questions asked, hands down. So that's by Southern Hook Company. Uh, same thing, one of the originals from Southern Hook Company, kind of same thing, uh, just in white. Then we've got, this is an interesting one. This is by Extreme Lure Creations. This is also around here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's built by a guy named Rob Jordan, ex-professional fisherman. 
never met the guy, but he builds these swim baits and his paint jobs are phenomenal. Now I will say the swim bait itself, this is more, you have to find its walk. It's kind of like almost a mag draft where you have to find the exact speed and it's a very fine margin for air. So they're kind of challenging, I would say, a little bit to throw or more advanced, I would say. I would not recommend this bait to a beginner. That's my opinion because you have to find that perfect cadence where that bait runs exactly like it should. So you kind of got to hunt and find it a little bit. But this one's a little bit slower. I would almost consider it almost a wake bait. It's a slower presentation if those bait, if those bass are not chasing, like just full blown. This is a perfect option to uh, go ahead. It still looks like a herring, but you slow it down and it swims at a slower speed. Just looks like a dying herring up there. And that's a pretty good bait overall. I've had success on it, but again, just being honest with you guys, it hasn't been anything life-changing. I haven't caught, you know, monsters on it. Could it catch monsters? Probably. I just personally haven't caught a ton of big ones on it. Then we have here another Southern Hook Company. Just, uh, let's see if it says on here. Oh, it's called the Juice. So just, as, that's what it's called. It's not a snack size herring, it's the Juice. But another one there. And then you guys saw this one at the beginning, another one of my favorites. This is a sweet bait junior. Again, another local Atlanta company specialized in herring baits. Unfortunately, they're pretty much near impossible to get, like straight up impossible. I don't know how else to say it, which is unfortunate because they're such good baits. But look at that bait right there. Again, this is the sweet bait junior, makes a, a couple of different colors, hands down. I mean, look at that. Looks just like a blueback herring. I mean, you cannot get better than that, period. Action, phenomenal. Hands down, one of the best. When I'm in a tournament, I'll be honest with you guys, this is the bait that I'm most reaching for. Either this or the Southern Hook bite size herring. So between those two baits, those are probably the two that I reach for the most. So now that you've kind of seen, I think it's a majority, I think that's everything, unless I left something back in the garage, but I think that's most of the swim baits, at least the multi-jointed swim baits that I use personally uh, to imitate herring. And now you guys have seen kind of my, I call it a collection, but honestly, these are the baits that have made it through and uh, that I still have. So obviously they work for me, I have confidence in them. But as, I, as promised, I'm gonna give you guys kind of the best overall for the money and then best period overall so hands down best for the money if you can find them on ebay is the original sabil now again i know it's still a little expensive i mean i think you can get them for 30 40 bucks which is expensive i get it but for the money compared to some of these others and how much they are i think that's probably one of the better values that's gonna catch you a ton of fish and works hands down, some of the best. Now you can, if you can't find the Sabeel's original for some reason, the Berkeley Magic Swimmer or the Spro Sashimi Shad are two great options that are gonna catch fish and you know won't break the bank. I think they're both less than $20. I'll give you guys two, my top two, regardless of the price. Number two, as I mentioned, and you guys probably already can figure it out by the way I talked about these baits, my number two bait, hands down, regardless of price, is the Southern Hook Company Bite Size Herring. The action and the profile is hands down some of the best. I actually don't know how much these are. I think they're around like 80 or $90. So they're kind of expensive. I say kind of. In the world of swim baits, you know, 80 or $90 is not, you know, the most ridiculous price out there. Now it's still stupid, it's for fishing and it's for one lure. But if you're looking for a great option under $100, hands down, this is the one for you. Again, just look at that. I mean, it's stupid how realistic that looks. Swims perfectly, never had any issues with them whatsoever. And then big reveal, hands down, number one, sweet bait. Sweet bait junior for me. It is, oh my goodness, guys, between me and my tournament partner, this has been responsible for more money that we've won, if I'm being honest, from the spring through the fall. I don't think it's a huge secret. Uh, guys around here, everyone throws a swim bait. It's between probably those two, the, my top two. 
and it's for a reason. They obviously catch fish and for some reason they trigger the bigger bass to react. I think it's the natural, you know, the natural swim pattern, the detail, you know, all of those things can play into why, whether or not a five pound plus class fish will commit and eat that bait. But this sweet bait, sweet bait junior, if you can find one, again, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you can. I mean, it's, it's unbelievably ridiculous. You can't get them. I mean, it's like they, I think he drops off like five to ten at a tackle store every six months maybe so i don't know why that is I, I couldn't tell you guys why there's so few of them out there but if you can get your hands on one you absolutely should especially if you fish lakes with blueback herring in them and i think this lure comes in yeah look at that 170 bucks so kind of expensive i know i've said that kind of this bait has paid for itself. I'll put it that way. That's why I say kind of. I know some of you guys probably think I'm crazy right now, but that's why I say kind of because this bait for me personally has paid for itself in tournament winnings. So hands down, I mean easily. So I say that because if you wanna look at it that way, and I know you spend the money up front, but it's definitely gained some money back for me for sure. And that's why it's so, you know, so valuable and it works so well. I've got a handful of them for sure because uh, they just work so stinking well. So those are my top two, period, regardless of price, hands down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new just about swim baits or different types of swim baits out there. You know, maybe some different brands that you can go and try to buy or find. And, you know, just go out there and start like i mentioned at the beginning of the video start chucking and winding if you're not familiar or not confident throwing a swim bait it will work just about anywhere so go to the most obvious places you think fish would be or if you visually see them even better and just start making long casts over points over brush along clay banks look for wind blowing in on a seawall anywhere guys i mean it, it literally mimics a blueback herring and with that with that said you can throw it just about anywhere and it's going to trick bass because it looks so natural it's so natural of a presentation it's also awesome because you can again you're reeling it super fast you can cover a ton of water doing that and if you do that you will eventually get bit especially as i keep driving this home if you're on a herring lake as always thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed this video go ahead and like it go ahead and comment down below I know I mentioned getting sponsored by G Loomis, but if you guys have made it this far, go ahead and comment down below if I were to get sponsored just for fun, because uh, I'm not sponsored at all right now, but just for fun, if I were to get a sponsor, what sponsor would you guys think that I would get sponsored by or that you would like me to get sponsored by? So post that down in the comments, just you know, a generic brand, uh, whatever your favorite brand is or whatever, but have some fun with me on that one. Again, thank you guys so much. I will talk to y'all soon.